Hey everybody, Steven Joe here. I was just going to roll up some characters so for the uh, BX Dungeons and Dragons. This is uh, this is the book from 1980, TSR Hobbies. I like to play this one and uh, sometimes so I was going to make up some some characters, some NPCs for a game and uh, thought I'd just walk through, just make a video rolling them up. It's pretty easy, pretty straightforward. But uh, but these are the character sheets that I have. And uh, I guess I'll just take you do one at a time. Maybe I'll just roll up the one character for this video, I'm not sure. But uh, anyway, I just thought, well, I might as well make a little video of this rolling up a character. Why not? So I'm just going to walk through it. Again, it's really simple. It's one of the things I love about this game. So the way that uh, the way that the old school game worked was that you would roll your ability scores with three six-sided dice and you would do it in order. Which is what I'm going to do. <laughs> because it's entertaining to see how bad an idea that really is. It was fun at the time, but we we quickly devised all kinds of new methods. One thing we would do, we'd roll four dice and take the top three. We tried that for a while. You can roll them in order and then assign them however you want to play them. That works too. You can... Uh, uh, you know, there's any number of different ways. That's what we used to do. We Way back in the day when this was the only game in town. Well, there was Advanced Dungeons & Dragons, but uh, I wasn't into that yet. And we would roll four dice. And even at four dice, you still get pretty low rolls, right? So, uh, but we're going to do it as the book says. And the book says... Uh, 3d6... Roll 3d6 for result, 3d18 for each ability. Put the result in pencil next to the name of the ability. <laughs> so that's what you do. And you do not get superheroes with this method. You can sometimes get pretty good characters. Absolutely. So we've got here, we've got an 11. I hope you can see this. I'm using pencil just because I need to erase things. Sometimes. So this character is actually pretty good. Oh. Spoke too soon. A wisdom of four. That's not great. You really have to be careful when you play this way because uh, you have to maximize your strengths, let me tell you. A six constitution and an eight charisma. So believe it or not, this character is actually not that bad. There's nothing too, too hideous about them. Uh, I am not sure what I want to play with this though. Let's see here. So we will check the different classes. Now this game, so I'm sure a lot of you know, uses classes, races. So dwarves are an actual class. Unlike, unlike modern games would break them up. You can be a dwarf cleric. In this, you can be a cleric or you can be a dwarf. Clerics are pretty much assumed to be human. There's lots of stuff that builds on this, right? So. But, uh. But there's lots that doesn't. All right, I'm not going to be a cleric. I'm not going to be a cleric, I don't think, with a wisdom of four. As four is a cleric's prime requisite. I'm just looking for where it actually says. Yeah, wisdom score of 13 or greater will give a cleric a bonus on earned experience points. Now you can adjust your ability scores uh, by lowering some and raising others. Wisdom may be lowered by magic users, fighters, dwarves, elves, halflings, and thieves. I don't think I don't think it should be lowered anymore. 
Uh, dexterity cannot be lowered. Constitution and charisma may not be lowered, but you can lower your strength or your intelligence. So this character has a strength of 11 and intelligence of 10. So we could lower our intelligence. Now for every two points you drop, you can raise an ability score one point. So let's see here. Let's go over to the fighter. Now fighters get a the prime requisite for a fighter, I believe, is strength. So if I could get the strength up to 16, I could get a plus 10% on earned experience. If I could get it up to 13, I could get a plus one to hit. So I think 13 is probably the best I could do. So if I were going to try and do that, I'd have to raise it. Uh, I would have to raise my strength by two points. So certainly I can do that. So two, 11 plus 2 would be 13, which would give me a plus 1. But it would lower my intelligence by 4 points, which would give me an intelligence of 6. All right. So there we go. I suppose that means this character will be a fighter. Level 1. Alignment. Don't worry about that yes, yet. Character's name. Well, I don't really need to uh, know what the name should be. It is a fighter, though. Uh, well, this guy's looking a little bit like Dragonbait to me. So, how about Howard Dragonbait? <laughs> so, this is Howard Dragonbait. All right, so we need to figure out what the fighters uh, see. We, well, we know what the hit die is going to be. It's going to be a D8 with no adjustments. Okay, so plus one. So this is this is where you look up your ability scores and any bonuses and stuff you do you get. Now I may get a penalty actually. It's entirely possible here. Uh, I haven't rolled up a character in a while, so if you're wondering why I'm why I'm humming and hawing and taking a little bit of a boo here, it's because I'm going off of uh, I haven't I haven't played this in a couple of years, so uh, strength plus one ah uh, strength plus one to hit yeah okay so it's hit damage. And open. All right. So, man, that's chicken scratch, right? Am I right? All right. Plus one to hit. Damage. Open. All right. All right. All right. All right. Uh, hit points. As I was saying, you look over on the fighter here. Or Actually, where was I? Fighters get... Oh, you can't see that, can you? Fighters get a D8. So, a D8 for... Oh, no. Don't tell me. Where's my eight-sided die? Oh, that's got to sound good on the old die. Oh well, I don't know where it is, so I'm going to roll a d8, or a d10 until I get a score. I'm going to use this one, it's easier to see. Until I get a store, score that is within 1 to 8. How about that? 5! Good enough. You don't actually have to use the specific die. So, 5 hit points. Hey, that's actually pretty good. That's actually pretty good. The number of times I've rolled a 1 for armor class is, uh, is ridiculous. Okay, so we've got the fighter, we've got that. Now let's just go through all of the ability scores here and see if I have any other adjustments. These are all intelligence of 
six to eight can write common words. All right. So I was only able to write common words. Obviously can't read. Uh, oh no, can write simple words. So that indicates being able to read, which is quite crazy. I mean, back in back in medieval times, it was most people couldn't read. So I don't know if this is supposed to emulate that or not, but it doesn't quite work. Wisdom of four, minus two on magic based saving throws. All right. Minus, minus two save versus magic. All right. Got to have, so intelligence, no real bonuses in there. Can write common words, so. Mm. Oh, I'm not going to write, only can write. I think I can remember that. Uh, okay, no, I better write it in Ken. Write common. Okay, 10 dexterity. Uh, we're looking at no adjustments here. A 6 constitution, minus 1 hit points per per die. All right, minus one hit point per die. So that means my pretty good score has gone to kind of not good. When you're first level, every hit point counts, let me tell you. And eight charisma, adjustment reaction. Minus one adjustment. Reaction. All right. All right. This is a colorful character. <laughs> so with a fighter, basically they're not restricted in the weapons that they can use. Uh, I get a bonus to experience points, which is good, but I believe it's only 13%. So looking over here. Prime requisite, 13 plus 5% experience points. And where do we keep track of experience? Plus 5% XP. Good enough. So we'll just throw that on the back here. All right, I'm not sure what alignment this guy should be. Obviously, Howard, character's name, Howard, Dragon Bait. Uh, hmm. I'm not going to worry about it. You only have three alignments. You have Law, Neutral, and Chaotic. I don't think this person would be Chaotic. That seems a little... Uh, I don't think that would be... I don't think that would be very good. Alright. So next we need to find... Saving throws, where HB 26, saving throws. All right, so a fighter gets a 12, 13, 14, 15, and a 16. Except this individual, Howard, Howard Dragon Bait has a minus two save versus magic. But isn't actually magic is not how it worded it, was it? So we have to be careful here with the actual language because I believe intelligence of oops. Oh, wisdom of four. All right, so it's the wisdom of four. Minus two on magic-based saving throws. So it's magic-based. So I would say that that would include that would include magic wands and probably spells. So I'm going to adjust these up just so that. So that I don't remember. So now a minus two, what you're trying to do is you're trying to roll 
the number or above, right? So a minus two is actually gonna be added onto this to make it more difficult. So we'll make magic wands 15 and we'll make spells 18. <laughs> ah, this guy falls for everything. He's that kid that sits at the front of the row in a magic show and falls for every trick. <laughs> Has their mind blown by every trick. Okay. <laughs> so, now we need to figure out the attack matrix. That's one thing about this book that I like. I've always liked this. It's just, you know, you can always just find stuff just by looking around. All right, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. I'm sort of seeing a pattern there. All right. So first to third level. So we're stuck with that for a while. Fourth and above, I'm pretty sure. I I don't know. Who the hell cares? Alright, so now for money. We've got all that. I haven't picked an alignment yet, but since there's only I'm just gonna pick neutral. Seems to be the best bet for a fighter all the time. Don't know the armor class yet. Time to buy some equipment. So let's roll up the money. It's going to be 10, 11, 12, which is 120 gold pieces. Now I'm just going to use a slip of paper here to remember uh, how much money I'm spending. So let's give let's give Howard here a backpack which is five. My chicken chicken scratch Oh, and uh, let's buy a sword. Two-handed sword, short, just a sword. A normal sword is 10. So we're at 15. We'll give him a sword. I've heard people, some people say sword. I've never enunciated the W. It's always been silent when I say sword. It's just sword. Okay, let's look at armor. We could... We could get chain mail. I think that might be a good idea. So we're going to get chain mail. So that brings our expenditures up to 55 gold pieces. Wow. And gives us an armor class of 5. But do we want a shield too? Uh, yeah. How about a shield too? A shield is 10 gold pieces. So we're at 65 gold pieces. So also have a shield. So sword, shield, chainmail. This is pretty kitted out. Gotta say, how much gold did I have? Okay, 120. So I'm over halfway through my money. So, oh. So you can't really see, can you? Alright. So this is the equipment. This is the equipment page here. And I'm just going through buying stuff. It's not a it's not a big list, but believe it or not, it's good enough. So one thing I think is a good idea would be rations. So let's get let's get a week of let's get a week of rations. Just standard rations. Unpreserved food is five gold pieces. So one week. Standard rations. So that would be seven days. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That way I can knock them off. Uh, rope, sack, don't need a sack. Got a backpack actually, which is kind of styling. Tinder box might be a good idea. Tinder box, so 73. Let's give ourselves a tinder box. And I think some iron spikes would be a good idea too. Iron spikes, one gold piece. So 12 iron 
spikes. Now, believe it or not, spikes are really handy for holding open dungeon doors and that kind of thing. It's a good idea to have that. And I do like to have a mirror for peeking around corners. So this Howard obviously would be part of a group. Oh, how much is the mirror again? The mirror is actually a pretty... I'm forgetting about torches. Ooh, torches. Let's get 12 torches. So we're at 76 and we've got 12 torches. All right. And then we will get the mirror, which is five. So we're at 81. And we've got a small mirror. All right. So basically, obviously the chain shield, all that self explained The backpacks, obviously, to, to pack out all the loot, carry all this stuff. So the tinderbox is obviously start fires, start the, you know, light the torches on fire, that kind of thing. We've got, uh, uh, the iron spikes are to open, to keep doors open, to keep statues from sliding and moving, or other things from sliding and moving. Torches are obviously, you know, to be able to see. And a small mirror is great for peeking around corners without getting spotted. It's a very, very good idea to do that. All right, and the only other thing I can think that Howard here might possibly need is 50 feet of rope for another. So 50 feet rope. All right, and the 50 feet of rope, the iron spikes are really great for tying off. That's uh, for tying off the rope. I uh, don't have a hammer. I suppose the idea is, I mean, you don't really need a hammer, right? You can always just, uh, a water skin would be a good idea. Right. Uh, water skin. You don't want to die of thirst on your adventure, right? So where was the water skin? How much was a water skin? Is one gold piece, so we're at 83. 83, huh? Huh? All right. Probably. Uh, 37 gold pieces left, which I think is probably probably a good idea. Let's just make sure that I did my math right in my head quickly. 0, 1, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah. All right. Good enough. 37 gold pieces left. Got a little bit of... Now, what I like to do... This is a modern thing, but I like to do up the character's profile. I like to use ocean. So what I just like to do is I just roll. If I roll over 10, it's high. If I roll under five, it's low. 10 or higher, five or lower. Uh, otherwise, it's just normal. So normal conscientiousness is nine, 10, 11, 12 is high. Extroversion is four five six seven it's normal a is low and neuroticism is 10 11 12 which is high all right so this person their openness is just normal so what most people would agree to do or not agree to do or try. Uh, conscientiousness is high, so if this person says that they're going to do something, they're going to do everything they possibly can to try and do it. This suggests to me maybe a good alignment. Uh, extroversion is neutral, so he's just he's not extroverted or introverted, just basically a regular person. Uh, agreeableness is low, so they do like to fight and argue. Uh, they do not get along easily with people. I think that's kind of interesting. And neuroticism is high, meaning they're really uh, affected by negative emotions, uh, are sort of probably have a lot of internal negative emotions, easily influenced by uh, the situation around them. 
if there's a lot of anxiety in the air, if the or if the situation is scary, that thing, that sort of thing, they are going to be more affected by it. But this high conscientiousness that suggests to me that maybe, maybe not not in real life that wouldn't mean that a person is good. But I think, I think in a D and D game, I think in a D and D game, we'll go with good. I think that would be. Uh, a good idea. I'll end my armor class. Leave the armor class is four, but let's just double check that. Yes, four. All right. So Har Howard's armor class is the same as his hits. <laughs> uh, special abilities. Well, you know what? I'm going to use, just for fun, I'm going to use a book I made for this. And I'm going to see if Howard has any special abilities. I'm just going to roll. We get to use the old, big old D60. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Whoop. <laughs> oh, my God. This thing is ridiculous. All right. It's, I don't think it's going to stay on camera. Stop! 40. All right. It's basically just, uh, it's almost like a sure-footed. You gain plus one to save against falling or tripping. All right. All right. Sure-footed. Plus one save versus falling or slipping. All right, all right, I'll take it, I'll take it. I think that's a neat little thing. I I created this for uh, Swords and Wizardry, but it'll work on this game too. I actually should have rolled this first, but it doesn't really matter. You can get some abilities that are good for magic users, thieves, or clerics. And if your character isn't that alignment, they just basically don't get to use it. Okay, so uh, that is this. This is Howard Dragonbait. The good fighter. <laughs> a man of, of, of little intelligence and little wisdom, but he's good at heart. But he will get cranky and will fight with you and argue with you if you, he doesn't see things your way. And uh, But if he says he's going to do a thing, come hell or high water, he's going to make sure he gets it done. Yeah, so I kind of like Howard Dragon Bait. I can relate to him. All right, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, please leave a like and a uh, thumbs up. And please leave a comment if you'd like. Tell me what I did wrong. That'd be great. I'm sure I did something wrong. And uh, yeah, helps with the algorithm. So thanks, thanks very much for, for uh, watching and hanging out. And uh, till the next video, talk to you later.